Hello YouTubers, Manny here from Manny's How To Workshop with a video on how to measure the primary and secondary resistance on the ignition coil for the first generation Xterra uh, Frontier and Pathfinder that have the 3.3 liter V6 engine. Um, so, and those basically come with the distributor and this right here is the ignition coil that's inside the distributor along with the uh, camshaft position sensor which this little clock ring is part of it and these are a couple of the pieces so is that here's the rotor right there but um, so basically uh, my truck has been having problems and I've you know, I found some things that were wrong and I replaced those, you know, such as the O2 sensor, that was bad. The uh, one of the fuel injectors was bad, so I replaced that. But I'm still having the same problem. Uh, as soon as it warms up, or even sometimes before it finishes uh, warming up, it, uh, it starts stumbling. And it, like I said, the RPM drops to about 500, and then the engine just starts you know, going to shaking, and then of course all the fuel trims are out of whack because uh, nothing's uh, reading right. So I looked at some videos and saw that a lot of people had replaced the ignition coil, and that did the trick. So I did the same thing. Went on Rock Auto, not a sponsor, but uh, went ahead and ordered a new one. Here's the new one here. Here's the old one right there and did some research to try to find what the actual values are for the primary and the secondary. Well, I found some online, of course, but they were generalized, non-specific. So I said, let me just double check my uh, repair manual. And sure enough, right here, it's in the Haynes manual, uh, repair manual for the uh, Nissan pickups, Frontier pickups. Uh, covers 98 to 2004, Xterra's 2000 2004, Pathfinder 96 to 2004. And in Chapter 5, under Engine Electrical Systems, it's actually listed right there. Uh, for the primary, uh, it should be between 0.7 and, I mean, 0.5 and 1 ohms right there. And then the secondary resistance, as you can see from there, it should be between 7 to 13,000 ohms. Okay, so let me go ahead and set up my uh, camera and multimeter here, and I'll go ahead and show you guys how to measure those exactly. So you're going to need a multimeter uh, like this one. This is my Fluke uh, 75, and you're going to have to set it on ohms, which is this symbol right there. It looks like a horseshoe. And take your positive lead, and if you know uh, which tab is the number one or the A as opposed to A and B one and two or positive and negative then this is how you set it up and the reason why I have my positive on this tab right here because I followed the wire that comes from the uh, from the you know ECU that supplies the 12 volts and it went to this tab first so I concluded that this back one right here is my ground and so that's how I figured it out. And then actually, when you measure these, it doesn't matter which way you put your uh, connections on, uh, your leads. Because I did that. I measured you know, both ways, and both came out the same. So as you can see, I have 0 0.7, 0 0.8 ohms on the primary, which these two small tabs is your primary. Between one of these and this guy right here is your secondary. And the resistance will should be the same between this tab to here and then the second tab to here. So right now, it uh, I have 0 0.7, 0 0.8, but it's because it's 91 degrees out here. And according to the manual uh, that I showed you guys, it uh, it said it right there. Hold on one second, if I can bring this over, right there, at 68 degrees Fahrenheit says, you know, ignition coil resistance at 68 degrees. Well, it's 91 over here. And so the, the resistance is going to be up a little bit. So basically here it's, it's up between 0.2 and 0.3 ohms on the primary. Okay, and that's the old one. 
So if I went ahead and measured the new one the same way, you can see that here's the new one. The new one is showing exactly the same thing, 0.7. Uh, more so 0 0.7 than 0 0.8 and this one even drops down to 0 0.6 um, well because it's newer okay so it's brand new hasn't had a chance to get you know heated like this old one did all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and measure the prime the secondary on the old one so I'll just pick one of these tabs right here take the uh, alligator clip off make it easier and then stick it in this hole right there. Come on. All right. And look at what we have 14.75 kilo ohms. Okay. And remember, the book said that it needs to be uh, 13. Where is it? Uh, right there. Yep, seven to 13,000 ohms. So on my old one, on the secondary, I got over a thousand more ohms than what uh, should be there. Actually, almost 2,000 more ohms. And I believe that's from the overheating, and I believe that could be what's causing my problem as well. So let's go ahead and measure the new one. And so you can see the comparison of what they what the values are. All right, Oop. slipped off. Come on, there we go. So the new one. Come on. There we go. 13.78 okay so I guess there's gonna be some variation based on manufacturer but yeah and that's you know 700 and something ohms over what the book is saying uh, but the old one is still a thousand more than uh, than the new one so and uh, just to show you that you can get the same reading from moving the tab over to the back one. Let me get this over here so it doesn't touch the other one at the same time. Okay. So now it's on the back one. And here's my measurement 13.78. Okay. And on the old one, on the back and on the old one same thing 14.76 on the on the back tab which technically that's supposed to be the ground so well should I make the call uh, as to whether or not this old one is bad because I mean the primary's resistance is good falls within where you know the specs but the secondary is high and that leads me to believe that the windings are starting to go and I did notice some discoloration here in the back which tends to look like it's burning or it was like overheating or something that even looks like that spot you guys could see there even looks like a little crack and it's not a crack but anyway like I said I saw a discoloration right here and then sits like this at the bottom of the distributor. But anyway, so I'm gonna have to make the call. I mean, this only cost me like 20, 25, 26 bucks for this coil, you know, instead of a hundred and something for the distributor. So I'm hoping that this does the trick for me because my baby's been sitting way too long, uh, not working. But anyway, so this was just to show you guys how to measure the resistance and to kind of check and see if, in fact, uh, you have a bad coil on this style of uh, ignition system that has a distributor, which is the Nissan's 
Xterra, Pathfinder, Frontier, first gen. All right, guys, as always, uh, please rate, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to get uh, notified when I upload some new videos. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, take care.